For anyone even remotely following the company over the past few years, it's become pretty obvious that Bethesda has changed. The one single player and large RPG focused developer has now really shifted towards multiplayer games, microtransactions, and nearly all games, as well as maintaining several mobile titles. But for several of these decisions, it's almost come out of left field, it's been surprising. The company that was once touting Save Player One is now selling a $7 fridge in their multiplayer game. There's been quite a transition. And it seems like one person may have uncovered why this is actually happening. And that person isn't me. It's actually a totally separate YouTuber by the name of Luke Stevens. He uploaded a video titled, I figured out why Bethesda got so greedy. In that, going over some of what I'll talk about in this video. I'm going to have a link to his video and his channel down below. I highly encourage you guys to check it out. Even if you watch this one, he goes a lot more in depth around the history of Bethesda. And his channel in general actually has some pretty cool video essays that I highly recommend you guys checking out, especially if you're a Bethesda fan. I'll have some of my favorite ones linked down below also. So some of you might be just looking at this like, oh, I saw this guy make a cool video and get some views and now I'm copying him. Well, not exactly. I think I could actually provide a little bit of a unique context or some additional info over what he talked about in his original video. I have been covering Bethesda almost exclusively for three and change years now. And this may come as a shocker to some of you, but I actually do have a financial and economics background. So first and foremost, there's a few things to get out of the way with a video like this. Firstly, who are we actually talking about here? I'm really going to be spending a lot of time focusing on Bethesda as they're the best example of this, but really the larger conversation is around Zenimax Media. Zenimax Media is the parent company to Bethesda. They own them outright as well as several other studios. What I'm talking about in this video was really apparent for all of these, but I think it's most apparent with Bethesda. Also, it is worth noting there are two Bethesdas. Bethesda Game Studios is the developer, the one we're going to really be focusing on in this video, Bethesda Softworks is the publisher. So I'd say first, one of the things to talk about is when did this change occur? A lot of people would argue right around 2015 to 2016 is when we really started noticing this transition. Actually, right around the point Bethesda started hosting their own E3 conferences rather than just attending other people's like Xboxes. From 2016 onward, we saw the re-release of Skyrim, the introduction of Creation Club, the release of Fallout 76 and the Atomic Shop, several mobile games in both Blades, Fallout Shelter 2, Fallout Shelter 1, and don't worry, Fallout Shelter 2 is actually a China exclusive, so you didn't miss anything. But really, the core identity of a lot of those games was a change for Bethesda, a switching up of the typical monetization just from expansions and DLCs to a microtransaction focus on pretty much everything they were releasing. And this is what really marked a negative change in many people's eyes. They didn't love this new direction. But why exactly was this all going on? Well, as I mentioned before, Bethesda is actually owned by Zenimax Media. Zenimax Media is a privately owned company, so they don't have to disclose all that much about their financial situation. But one thing we do know, and this was actually discovered by Luke Stevens, is that Zenimax Media, starting in 2006, actually received several large-scale investments by Providence Equity. So to really make it simple, what Providence Equity does is give a company money and then expect a return on that money. Their entire business is just investing in companies that they think will succeed and grow. And then later on, hopefully they get a return on that investment. In their case, typically through things like dividends and resale of their shares. There's two major investments by Providence into Zenimax. Once in 2007, where they invested $300 million for roughly 25% of Zenimax, that of course being a massive portion of the company and valuing them at about $1.2 billion. But then again, in 2010, they invested $150 million. This time around, we don't actually know how much for. It was described how this money would basically be used to make further acquisitions and develop additional games, which they definitely did. They acquired several additional companies. They made some pretty great titles. It's actually probably why a lot of you are fans of Bethesda now. And this also established Providence as having a pretty considerable stake of this company. They would definitely be a major player as far as the macro decisions for these games and this company goes. But where this all really starts to matter, and again, this was discovered by Luke Stevens, is in 2016, as we actually got some leaks from Providence. It's not totally clear who, but somebody at Providence actually described to Bloomberg how there were some talks internally as to what they wanted to do with Zenimax. Two of the potential options on the table being an IPO of the company or a potential sale of their stake of the company, or potentially the company overall. 2016 being that year where we really established the turning point for Bethesda, and I think this is the key as to why we're seeing this transition with the company. So in finance, or really just overall, an IPO or a buy 
buyout for the owners of the company can be viewed as an exit strategy. This is pretty obvious with a buyout, you are just selling your stake in the company, hopefully for a profit, and then you're done. You're kind of washing your hands with that investment. With an IPO, it's not quite as obvious. When a company does an IPO, typically you take a portion of that company, you're going to sell it to the public, but still retain some of your own shares and oftentimes still maintain a management position, at least for a little while. But then over time, you could sell off more and more of your shares or eventually just exit the company overall. So it seems like Providence with Bethesda was looking for one of these two things, a way out. Despite them reaching out and trying to find it in 2016, it seems like they weren't successful. And I would argue one of the main reasons might be due to the type of revenue they had. And that is likely why we're seeing such a big transition with Bethesda. Take for example, two companies, one's worth $21 million, one's worth $19 million. Which one is the more attractive buyout? Many people might say, well, the one that's worth more if you have the money. But in reality, no, because even though those companies' revenues might be similar with one being slightly lower, some revenue is more valuable than other revenue. If you take a look at Bethesda before 2016, their revenue structure was pretty simple. It was basically spend a few years developing a game, let's say it was Fallout 4. When you actually release that game, you get a massive chunk of revenue. A ton of people buy it all in the first week. But then over time, things start to die down. Your revenue will decrease, but you have a ton of cash on hand. Then Bethesda would release a couple of DLCs or their expansion packs, and you get some additional revenue from that. But then all after a year or two, that revenue from that game will be significantly lower because most people bought it, played it, and that's it. From an investment or buyout standpoint, that's not a super ideal model. What if all of a sudden in 2015, after spending all that time and resource into that product, it bombs? From an investor standpoint, that is very risky, having these massive sources of revenue periodically. What you would much rather see is a consistent flow of revenue on a monthly basis, even if it's slightly lower, because you could start to predict as things decline. And that is really what we started to see from Bethesda. Following 2016 and this interest in a buyout, we saw the release of Creation Club. Although Creation Club's a bit more sparse now, initially on a monthly basis, we would more or less see new mini DLCs for the game. That was Bethesda collecting additional revenue on a monthly basis, probably less than they would get if they just did it quarterly or even yearly, but it was more consistent. Then over time, we see the release of Fallout 76. You get a big chunk of revenue with the release of that game, but then over time with their bi-weekly or weekly releases on the Atomic Shop, you're getting again more consistent revenue. And it's pretty clear they're applying this model to most of their more recent releases. We see it with Skyrim Special Edition, Fallout 4, The Elder Scrolls Blades, Fallout Shelter, Fallout 76. All of them have monthly to weekly releases of some kind that can be monetized to create that consistent revenue model. And revenue of that kind is a lot more predictable, which makes it a lot more appealing to investors. So to summarize, what I think is going on with Bethesda and ZeniMax and Providence Equity is that those at the top want an exit strategy. They want out of the company, whether it be through an IPO or a buyout. When they tried it back in 2016, maybe they didn't get the numbers or the return they were hoping for. So now they're adapting the company to be just more attractive, a more appealing investment. So they're transitioning from a model that has high but sporadic revenue to a model that has more moderate but consistent revenue, which from an investment standpoint is really more of what you want to see. So now, of course, this is very heavily on the speculation side. This is just what I think. I think it makes a lot of sense given some of the context. I wouldn't be shocked if in the next few years we hear about some major changes at Bethesda and Zenimax, whether that be some kind of new investment or somebody selling their shares there or potentially even an IPO. So you could invest in the company if you wanted to. A huge shout out again to Luke Stevens for bringing this all up. I'll again have links to a lot of his cool content down below. I encourage you guys to check it out. I thought I could add enough to the topic to make my own video on it. So hopefully you found this one interesting also. But I would say one of the other potential large impacts of this is it's not temporary. This could be a permanent new direction from Bethesda and Zenimax, which I know is what a lot of people don't want to hear. Even after they potentially get bought out or are publicly traded, that doesn't mean things will just revert back to how they were previously. And if anything, they'll likely just continue down this path. Either way, as always, again, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope to see you all next time. Later.